It's exciting to watch me tune, is it not? I was in that new tuning that I just did a video on, so I'm going to have to throw it back in that probably later today. Um, I've got a new video premiering on Wednesday uh, about the G2 tuning. So it's D, G, D, G, A, D. So. Now, I'm assuming some people, hey, Bruce, I'm assuming some people are like kind of off for the week. My wife is off for the next two plus weeks, which I love. I love having her around the house doing housework. I'm just kidding. I just lost everybody. Hey, Josh, morning. Let's see. All right. They're almost in tune. Like I said, I, I just I got a video coming out on Wednesday. I premiere. I'm, I put it as a premiere for 9 a.m. my time. So I'll try to I'll I'll set an alarm to remind me to watch it so we can all watch it together. Okay. Uh, it's only about 10 minutes long. It's short compared to my last video. Um, the Beatles video. Oh, and that's a live. Oh, look, I got a new subscriber in the time I've been talking. This is the live count right here. Okay. This is actually updating live. So. If I get really close to 100,000, I may log on and we, we may do a countdown together. <laughs> I had a friend that subscribed and then unsubscribed yesterday because he wanted to be the 100,000. So he's going to try to wait and be the 100,000. I have to, I'll have to, um, I'll have to text him when I'm at 99,999. <sighs> Um, and, we, and we were talking about songwriting and we started a song I got <laughs> I may have to go back to the video um, last week's video to remember how the how it went to be honest um, were we in 6-8 I can't no I don't I have it here hold on I can go back a, a, a screen here there's that's the so this was like <laughs> Right away, what that reminds me of is uh, what I was talking about, art versus craft. I, I think I want to delve into that some more. Um, we, we can keep working on the song. We may actually, um, uh, as we, um, oh yeah, I remember, I kind of remember the melody now. If model, that's sus. That's right. the only melody we had locked in stone, I felt like. Um, I even had a variation for the second verse, which is always good to do a melodic variation on the second verse. So it's just not a carbon copy. Um, again, uh, I love what Sting said about music in his interview with Rick Beato. <laughs> I'm going to start doing interviews too. That's one thing I want to do. Now that I, I, okay, so oh, think about my um, video that's coming out on um, uh, on uh, Wednesday is it's my first real two camera shoot. I had two cameras running at the same time. And I I, 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 th I think it turned out pretty good. I'm hoping I didn't go back and forth too much. Um, but I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I should do one where, you know, I've got the camera on the hands, but I, I just wanted two different perspectives. Because I was just talking, excuse me, about, I just ate a, a, a breakfast sandwich from Starbucks uh, too fast. Suck <laughs> on this air in my stomach. You know when you swallow food too fast, you just kept you get more air than food, and then it all has to come up at some point. <laughs> it's, so, it's like, oh, Bruce, thank you so much. I'm gonna pin Bruce's uh, Discord invite link. I think Bruce is just on top of it. Oops, dang it. <laughs> Dennis is okay. Here we go. Pin message. Okay, so that's gonna be there. That's gonna be interesting. Usually around the Christmas time, we get more viewers. Um, and like I said, I'll do a, um, on Wednesday, I'll do a, um, uh, when we do the premiere, <clears throat> um, when, on Wednesday, when we do the premiere, 
um, I'll uh, I'll try to be on board with everybody. It was weird though because I looked at the video and it had seven likes, and I'm like, oh shoot, did I post it? And I realized you can like it if you're a subscriber. You can like the video even before it posts, uh, and you get a you get a notification that. And it's funny because I didn't know that, and so I hadn't put um, uh, a, a screen cap up yet, you know, with the name of the video on it and everything. Um, also, my my, um, that Beatles video, holy cow, that thing just has legs. So I'm going to do a screenshot here for you guys so you can see, um, you know, they, like I said, YouTube's analytics are freaking on point. I mean, they just give you so much great information. So I've actually got two more Beatle videos in the works. Uh, but if I go to content and I click on the video, uh, the Beatle video, uh, I can click on analytics. So I, you know, they give you analytics for each individual video, not just. Um, so yeah, it's still getting 305 views every 48 hours. Um, let's see. I got. It's gotten me seven subscribers. Okay, so here, let me do a screenshot of this. So you can see this. Uh, I'm just going to screen grab this real quick. Okay. I mean, just a ton of information. All right. Now, so I've got to add this JPEG. Hold on. Image. Okay. Browse desktop. And what they do is they give you like this... Um, the gray is my what a normal video would do. Okay, you see that? And look what the Beatles video has done. It just broke out. Like it, it start was started out tracking just like a normal video, and then all of a sudden, boom! Day three, it just broke out. And I, I'm not sure if somebody. I mean, I went to a one forum and and posted, and I think I got three or four comments on that forum. So I know it wasn't from that forum, unless people. Um, went to the went to it didn't didn't comment on the forum, but uh, yeah. So I thought so that thing's it's that's kind of cool to me. So I've actually got plans to do a couple more. Um, I'm gonna just delete this though. I don't need we don't need this. A couple more Beatle videos. I'm gonna do one on how they influenced me, and um, one on can it happen again. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> yes, they influenced me, of course, and <laughs> no, it can't happen again. Sorry. I don't think anybody really argues that point. Hey, Renee, good to see you. So, um, the, th <laughs> the thing we talked about <clears throat> last week, um, about the... Um, uh, art versus um, craft, okay? I really feel like that is a huge thing. That's actually, that intersection of those two things is where, how songs get written, I really believe. I, I just feel like, I, I could probably say with confidence that everybody does the same thing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, uh, uh, we're going to use different um, terms for that same moment, Okay. I, I, I had said, um, it's going to be giant, but art, okay, Ooh, grab that, all right, oops, make it small, all right, versus craft, but you could also think of it as head versus heart. And you can think of it as left brain um, versus right brain, and that's if you if somebody oops could somebody oops <laughs> it's kind of funny to misspell right when you're typing right brain. Okay, now and I again I always hey Croatia welcome I always forget which is right and left brain. Um, I think is. The right brain controls the left side of your body. The left side of my body is 
controlling in on the gu guitar because I'm right-handed is controlling my fret fretting hand and the my left brain is controlling my right side and that is my strumming hand or my picking hand and um, you know I, even if I, I without even knowing which is which and somebody's gonna jump in and tell me because I, I apologize I always forget this it's like I always forget homage I never understand homage <laughs> I've blown up more amps <laughs> Not understanding. Uh, uh um. Hey, good to see you. We got some newbies here. Re Renee, uh, Lena, awesome. I love seeing you here. Aslan's here, and Paul Meyer, my old friend. I've known Paul Meyer about as long as I've known anyone. I've known Paul Meyer longer than I've known my wife, and of course my kids. That's probably true of him knowing me too. So, um, <clears throat> but. <laughs> the um, Jason Turner, hello. Uh, sorry, I had one of those sandwiches, like I said. No, I didn't brush my teeth before going on live. I'd make a t horrible newscaster. And you see my haircut, you like that? Pretty. She went really short. She was freaking out. I think she thought it was too short. I like, I don't care. It just means longer before I have to come see you again. Um, but you know, if if the right brain is controlling my left hand, and it's it's just like, you know, uh, it's more the head stuff, uh, brain brainiac stuff, and, and not so much emotion. And then that makes sense because my right hand, that's kind of where my feeling comes from. It's more for my right hand. I, this stuff's in the way, so I'm going to make this smaller. You get the gist of this. Um, you know, a lot of my the emotion and the feeling and the groove and the time and things like that come from the right hand. So someone's going to jump in and, and, and tell me. But um, so and that is a live counter I have up there. So that actually uh, as when I figured out how to do a screen grab of, uh, of a window, I have a window open over here. And so that's a screen grab of that. So that's the live. I've gotten one subscriber since I've gone on. So we'll see. I, like I said, I fully expect YouTube to purge. I could hit 100,000 and drop below because the end of the year purges, I think, might happen at, at YouTube. So we'll see what happens. All right. We've got a sandwich. Ooh, sub sandwich. In Michigan. Um, yeah, my favorite sandwich places in Michigan and Petwater. Good birds, I think. Okay. So... I was talking about this last week, and, and so the songwriting thing is a really, really hard thing to teach. Um, it's very personal. Everybody has their own style, and that's what makes it something that everybody wants to learn because everybody's, oh, wow, I want to write a song like Bob Dylan, or I want to write a song like, you know, John Paul, or I want to write a song like, you know, whoever. And um, uh, it's. Um, it's this, it's this weird thing that you can't really explain in some ways. Although, academically, I could sit down and write a song like anybody. I could study somebody's songwriting. Uh, they even have computers that do this now. They, you can input, say, I want write, write me a Beatles song, and the computer will literally write you a Beatles song um, using all of their kind of tendencies. Um, and so you can do that, and that would be purely craft. Very little art involved in there. Although I still think there would be those moments but here's what I, what I was talking about, like with um, that that song we, that we kind of wrote together last week. Okay, this one here. I just started with a C chord, but simpler than a C chord, right? And it just started with a feel. Right there, immediately I've got some kind of emotional, visceral reaction to that. There's a knowledge I'm playing a C chord, I'm going to go to like a C sus, but I got that E ringing out on top, so it's really more like... An, you know, C4 chord, which, you know, C4 chord would be a C, E, G with a 4, which is F. So it'd be actually a four note. It's different than a sus chord. A sus chord would be three notes. A four chord would be just four notes. Triad plus the four. So you get that, you get that rub of that, that F and that E against each other. But it kind of, that rub goes away with, in the context of the chord. It just sounds beautiful. But I'm just only on that for a second. Okay, but it was my brain that said, I know that's going to work. It was the craft. It, it was the, <clears throat> we're still, I'm still looking. I'm, you know, you know. here's the thing is you're going to tell me which is the right brain and the left brain. And then I'm going to forget even in the, the time we're together here. But um, 
But, you know, my head said, oh, this will work. My heart said, it definitely works. My head said, okay, try this. My heart said, yes. So that's that moment uh, where you take a little bit of knowledge. Um, you know, even kids that don't know anything about harmony, they, they'll sit there and go, ooh, mysterious, right? There's immediately something happening, something stirring emotionally when you take that E major chord up a half step, okay? Exactly. So, so there's, there's that thing. So when you're writing, when you're sitting down to write, um, there has to be moments where your, your heart takes over and makes the, makes the final vote. It's, it's like v, the heart has veto power, in my opinion, when you're writing. Okay. So, um, when I was working on this progression, you know, it was like, and right away, the chord harmony that I'm making is, is de determining the melody. And I went, oh yeah, that's nice. And, and then the F to C is much stronger than the C sus to C. That's a really soft cadence. A cadence is a movement between two chords. F to C is it called the amen cadence. A that's how you end a lot of hymns, right? So, but F, or, or a C sus is a very soft version of that. I could even do F over C, which is still softer than the, you know, when you go from F in the bass to C in the bass, you get a really, really strong cadence or really determinant, you know, it's very moving. Okay, so, so right away I'm going from the, uh, from the simple C sus, And we ended up making that rhythmic pattern, that dotted quarter note, bum, two, and that push, part of the so hook of the song. So we use that rhythm throughout the song to give the song what's, what I call kind of familiarity. Um, one of the things you want to try to do, you almost want to write a song that sounds like another song. Uh, you're much more likely to give a song a second listen if you go, wow, that just resonates with me. That sounds like something I've heard before. If that makes sense, um, it you know, and if it's totally completely foreign, chances are it's it's going to be gibberish. If it doesn't sound like anything you've ever heard before, you know, it's probably and buy my new single. I should do that. I should just release that and see what happens. That would be freaking hilarious. Get a billion downloads. Everybody inserts it in their Spotify playlist. <laughs> But that has no, you know, that, that just almost sounds like computer gibberish. Right, Bruce? I can't even play it now. Alan! Holly! Good morning, Holly. So, so it's, it's kind of this, that moment, I, when I, I realized that worked okay, that was my, that was the art of, of the moment telling me that the craft was correct, okay? Now, I could have gone to, okay, I went to A minor, and I liked that, and to me that worked, okay, when I went to A minor, but I could have tried so. I wanted to hear A minor, but I could have, I, I could have theolo uh, theologically, theoretically known, oh, D minor is in the key. I could go D minor, would it, okay. So that's where, that's that moment. Again, you, you try something. When you're writing a song, you start with one chord, maybe start humming something over, and then go to another chord and see if that, is that the one I wanted to, no, it's not right. You go back to the beginning. Sometimes you have to play a verse. In fact, my I, I remember telling you guys a story about one of my screenplays. Uh, my, my uh, yeah, I had a, a feature film screenplay that I wrote. I've written several, but it was, um, Basically, it, it never, obviously never got made, but it's just for a hobby. But it was about a, a, a songwriter. 
And uh, his next door neighbor, who he doesn't really know, who's a record, who want an aspiring record producer, and starts stealing songs from him. And he does, he completely doesn't know he's being stolen from because the guy's making him into pop records, and he's kind of more of like an acoustic Bob Dylan kind of guy. Um, but the songs are song, a good song's a good song. Um, and um, but there's a scene at the very beginning of the of the script of the of the movie, not <laughs> never been made, but I wish it would be It'd be fun. Uh, where the guy's sitting in his living room, the, his daughter's asleep, his wife's at work, and he's sitting in the living room writing songs. And he's doing that. He's doing the verse, and then he hits a wall, and it's like he tries a chord, it doesn't work. He's like, no, that's not it. So he has to go all the way back to the beginning of the verse and does it again. And there's a reason I'll do it like that, because I really, really, really want to get myself in that moment of that transition from verse to chorus, or verse to pre-chorus, or verse to second verse, or whatever it is. Um, I really want to get myself into that moment. So I will go ahead and sing it all the way through again. Um, and we kind of did that. I keep bouncing back and forth between these windows, but kind of did that when we came, when we kind of came up with our B section. I'm still not convinced that G is the right chord for the B section, which is technically our chorus at this point. Uh, you know, maybe a little weird to start the chorus with the five chord. Not bad, but... It makes it hard to get to, and we actually found that was the case, right? I mean, kind of like painting yourself in a corner. You're like, how do I get back to this chorus from the bridge and all that? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're actually, <laughs> so, Jason, so far we're really just talking about a couple chords. And I'm keeping this pretty simple. I mean, I got an F chord in there. Um, but uh, the idea is we're talking about songwriting, which even someone who knows just two chords, because I've done three videos now with, uh, two chord videos with five different songs. So I've, you know, I can think of at least 15 songs that have only two chords. Um, and there's songs out there with only one chord. The song's based on a riff. Um, and we talked about riff writing too. We're going to do more of that kind of stuff. This is, for me, this is really fun to teach on. I could totally teach a college class on it. Um, although it's, it's a classic case of I've never written a hit. Okay. So, you know, it, you could definitely go to a college and take a class from someone who's written a hit. Um, but um, uh, but I've written a lot of songs. And I, I think there's there's truth. Oh, oh, look at this subscriber count. I'm going to get rid of this subscriber count. This is old. So I'm going to delete that. Remove. Yes. This is where we stand. Yeah, we're just sitting at... 891 right now. So very excited about getting to 100,000 because at 100,000, I get a freaking plaque. I think I got some plaque on my teeth right now from that sandwich at Starbucks. But <laughs> okay, so yeah, that would be that would really stink if YouTube sent me some like plaque from somebody's teeth. It's really gross. And that would be really like lame. Here's your plaque. That's not my plaque. DNA. Awesome pants. That's a great handle name. Come on, everybody change it. Pepper, good, good. Pepper's here. Merry Christmas, Pepper. Merry Christmas, everybody. In fact, I will, I'm going to be on that uh, when I drop the video on Wednesday. I, I will try to remember to be at the premiere so we can all talk. Um, but, uh, uh, and I'm planning to be here next Monday. I But if my uh, count gets up to 100, almost 100,000, I'm going to go live. And if, Unless it's overnight, that would be a bummer if it happened overnight. But if it happens over today, um, I may jump on and go, hey, we're at, you know. I mean, it goes so slow. I mean, we've gotten one in the last 26 minutes. So I'm not sure. I may have to wait until it's like 98 before I really get too excited <laughs> and jump online. Because otherwise, we could be sitting here staring at a number for like an hour and a half waiting for it. To, and it may go down. <laughs> It's, YouTube takes that moment and goes and purges and it's like goes down 50 subscribers. So, but <laughs> Sam, um, <clears throat> but there's, there's that moment when you try something and, and you try something and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that may, somebody else may be sitting in the room and they go, oh yeah, that's great. And I've been in that situation. I go, no, no, that's not it. Are you sure? Yeah, no, that's not the thing. So, um, so the A section, we did it twice. You might only have to do it once. But I'm going to do it twice. Is that right? Dun, 
No, I went down. I took down. that rhythm and hook. So I'm still not sold on that B section. Here's the thing. The chords are boring, so what? Doesn't matter. Like I said, it could be a two chord song, it could be a one chord song. The chorus could be one chord. It doesn't matter if that if, if if at this moment that's boring, because we have all these elements here that we can pull from. We haven't even started the melody yet. The melody could be very interesting. The lyrics could be really interesting. You know, the harmony could actually be even though the chords are real simple. We could have we could have really interesting harmonies. Um, you know, the orchestration instrumentation could be very interesting. You know, the arrangement's already kind of, the song form's not there. Um, I could change the groove, um, uh, but in the production, we could add an element. Um, it could get, you know, it's going to get bigger, so in the chorus, typically. So, and the pitch is going to go up, so you're going to have a little bit more dynamics and, and excitement there, okay? So, so at this point, the B section's kind of boring, but... It, and we and even if I come up with a pretty good melody here, um, it may not be enough on its own without getting in, getting into the point where we're actually putting it into the going to the studio and adding elements to it and going okay. You know, I I don't know. I have no idea what. I have no idea what's going to happen there yet. So we're not, not really there. But viscerally, um, emotionally, when I went from that, you know, kind of worked, uh, but it doesn't have to go to G. So I'm not sold on the B section. The A section's fine. And I, the C section can tell the, the bridge, technically, the C section. Um, <laughs> the E7 is a secondary dominant. I wrote that because I kept forgetting what it was called. Um, so right now we have an intro, which was just uh, C, the, the first two bars. It's the intro. Now, Lyrically, we haven't really talked about lyrics, but lyrics, there, there are definitely certain lyrics, words, sound forms that come out of your mouth that won't work in certain moments. And they're ones that work better. Um, and I, believe it or not, most people don't ever think about that, but they rule out lyrics a lot of times because it's not it's not fitting some for some reason. It's like, that doesn't really quite work. And it, it may be, a lot of it's, the, you know, you, you, you got to be careful not to put the emphasis in the wrong syllable, right? <laughs> it's Catherine here. I don't know why I keep thinking Catherine's an English professor. I don't know why. But that's one of my favorite English professor jokes. So, um, but <clears throat> the, um, excuse me, not COVID, I don't think. I was at a super spreader event last night in Hollywood, though. Um, playing in a band for this big, well, not it was a big, it was pretty big. It was a Hollywood Presbyterian Church, which is a gorgeous old church. Um, it was for Hollywood Prayer Network, and so there were a lot of um, like different celebrities getting up and singing. There were a lot of celebrities in the audience, and I'm really bad with faces. I know that the guy that plays Jesus from The Chosen, he was the MC, so I saw him. <laughs> I recognized him. <clears throat> so I did a gig with Jesus last night. <laughs> um, but that's got a real down home kind of vibe. Now, if this were a pop song, okay, and I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about this today because, uh, and and I'm kind of. It's so weird, but ironically, I'm a little bit on the forefront of a pop music because I write with pop 
artists. Um, and I'm, I'm 60 years old, but I, I work with people that are 20, 22, 23, 25. Justin is 27. So I work with a lot of young people when it comes to songwriting. And so generally what I do is I just create the foundation, the, the chord structure that gets written above. Uh, I don't write what they what in pop world we call top line, which is lyrics and melody, because I don't really have the capability of writing a 2021 or 2022 melody or lyric, um, uh, because those are not my, it's not my generation necessarily. But foundationally, that's, that's kind of universal. Harmony is pretty universal through the ages. The only thing is that sometimes the progressions change. We're going to talk about that. We've talked about this before, right? Where in the 50s it was... One, six, four, five. And then it was... That was very 90s. The groove, you know, the hip-hop kind of vibe. Um... And so different corporate, same chords, but just different order, uh, kind of populate di different decades. I find that to be somewhat true. Um, and so I have a lot of the the the, uh, the pop, you know, like a, there's like. Kind of let it be vibe. What happens is, in a lot of times in pop songs, and it's starting to happen less. We're starting to see more song form, more section music in pop. But um, <clears throat> but what has happened for 10 years at least is that they'll write over the same chord progression. And you're like, well, that's boring. Well, somehow they make it not boring, and that's the brilliance of it. I always use the example of Neo's song, Mad. Um, <clears throat> great. He, he does... You know, <laughs> I think it is that corporate. Not quite, but. And that's the first verse. Um, that's the first melody I did. And he goes. It's just, he comes up with, a, like, every one of those melodies you could turn into a song. So, hey, guys, check this out. We got two more. Look at that. Huh? Somebody's watching. Somebody watch. What if you go like, pa, 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 pa? <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Yes, I think so. Oh, interesting. There's a spider in my room. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, but, and, and that's where we're, but, but when we get to lyrics, like this moment, bah, 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 that's like, you know, and in some ways, is this the chorus? Bah, 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 bah. that you know surprise again music should be about surprise that's what I was I started to say and I didn't finish it but when Rick Beato interviewed Sting he um, he said the first one of the first things they talked about was surprise in music and Sting says if I don't get surprised in the first eight bars I'm probably gonna skip to the next song and Bach was famous for that. Bach would surprise and turn something around. You'd be like, whoa, where did that come from? Especially if you were, if you could transplant yourself to listening to when Bach wrote it. Uh, because it was much more surprising back then. Now we're like, oh, that's just Bach. <laughs> it's like when, go to, that's, oh, well, that, that doesn't surprise me. That's Beatles. But it's still kind of a moment. Um, and so even if, if it's been done a thousand times before, if you, if you set it up right, it's still going to create that, that reaction here. 
Okay. So again, we're your head can come up with a chord progression, but your heart's going to have to determine if it works. And for me, the jury is still out. Whoops on this um, on that B section. Uh, I'm still not completely convinced. Uh, but lyrically. In this range, you can almost say anything, but here, bah, 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 that's going to have to be an a, either important lyric or it's going to have to be a, a lyric uh, a, that, that fits sonically. Um, just reading Catherine's uh, uh, chat. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, you can put any word in there, any words in there, but that, <laughs> that would be, uh, you know, if you're going to sing beat perception in a lyric, you're probably going to, something's going to have to be going on rhythmically at that moment. You know what I mean? So, Adam here, Silva, what's going on? There's a spider in my room. Let me get a broom. Yeah, and I could the song could be about me like missing the spider constantly and, and destroying the room, like those cartoons where they're trying to kill a fly and they break everything in the room. I'm not in Dad Gad right now. I was in something similar to Dad Gad. I'm I got a video coming out on Wednesday about a new tuning that's similar to Dad Gad. So <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> so uh No, see, see, that's the thing. You know, we've got the thing called iamic pentameter, and it, it, there's like, let me get my broom. See, it doesn't work. Let me get my broom. There's a spider in my room. Let me get my broom. It, it doesn't quite. Fit. I mean, I'm just talking about the sound of the words, though. Let me get, let me get. So you also have to realize there's, there is accent when you talk. There's accents on words, like, you know, like I said, you can always put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. But uh, who's the actor that always puts the accent on the weird words? Uh, older guy, kind of creepy. Uh, he did the cowbell skit with uh, 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 Will Ferrell. He was the producer. What's that guy's name? So you're all going to know it. Well, how many do we have watching right now? I, I feel like there's a lot of people here. Oh, not that many. Peaked at 30 so far. All right. Well, I'm going to keep going. You guys, you can be there, watch, whatever. But it's it's kind of that kind of thing where it's like so sentences have accents as well. Um, questions, like if you ask a question, like, um, how many guitars do you own? You know, how many, how, how many guitars do I own? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, or what is it? Uh, you know, commas are important. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. You know, it's like that kind of thing. So you, you, um, you want to make sure that, um, you know, that kind of stuff, that, but you'll, that actually happens a lot of times without you realizing. Uh, now I'll tell you someone who's really not very good at that <laughs> is Alanis Morissette. Uh, her, you know, uh, ironic or what, one of her songs, I forget which one it was. It was like, Oh my gosh, the, she's putting the emph emphasis on the wrong syllables. It's just sounded so like, ah, I couldn't listen to that song. I forget what song it was, but ha Oh, happy birthday, Holly. What? See, and that's the other thing. I took ha li. You don't want to separate a word like that. You'd want to go ha li, whatever. 
but you wouldn't go, Holly, you wouldn't do that. So there's definitely rules to writing lyrics. <laughs> yeah, I bought my wife a house for her birthday like five years ago or whatever. And so, that's <laughs> and Christmas and birthday and Christmas and birthday and Christmas. Yeah, she has her own house. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, some people do that. I have a friend that does that. He has a house and she has a house. And they are very happily married. And they're together on the weekends, but during the week they they have different things going on. So, um, so again, the B section. Let me let me. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Uh, okay, I think I have this memorized. I'm going to do. Go to the next page. Okay, we still we have no new subscribers since I we last checked. But this is a live stream, live running tally here from YouTube, direct from YouTube. So, um. I'm going to use this art versus craft, head versus heart. I kind of did this backwards, left brain versus right brain. But um, we're going to use that to maybe kind of come up with a better B section potentially. Okay. Um, I, and I could keep the chords the same. It doesn't mean you have to change the chords. Um, I've got a rhythmic I a melody idea already for the first verse. <laughs> Or a pop song, I'd stay on this progression. go there for sure that's way out of my range the c is pushing it d is like the highest note i like to sing so you see what i did there was i kept the chords the same but we got a new a new melody which now i would consider a second half of a verse it didn't really still feel like a chorus to me um uh <clears throat> but it was definitely a new melody over the same chord progressions and so it's kind of like putting new wine in old wine skins <laughs> Biblical reference. Um, no, it's kind of like, um, but it didn't feel like a chorus. It felt like a pre-chorus. Okay, but that's okay. Wait, so I'm trying to remember what I did. Oh. So I've already forgotten. The other one, so I go to the kind of the other the other suspension over that. So I kind of have this. I'm kind of go back and forth between B, I mean G and and C. So over the C. creates uh, that's definitely different than more space here right so now I'll need more lyrics your backgrounds
remember anything I did. At least I, this is like, this is like when I really write, I re just keep the tape going. So if I come up with something like, oh crap, what did I just do? That was cool. <laughs> right? So I kind of have that. If I want to go back and watch myself and stare at myself and go, hey, uh, in fact, I'll say hi to myself. Hey, future Tom. <laughs> if I want to do that, uh, I can. But you see what I did there? I kept building. I kept, so I used a couple tools. I kept the corporation thing, which actually I really like that corporation. So that actually kind of works for me. And now we're saving that G chord. If we ever, ever want to go, we don't have to go to the five chord, but if we ever want to go to that five chord, okay, Renee's helped me here um, with the spider um, in the room thing. Yes, where were you yesterday spinning your whip in other place? <laughs> and the spider in my room is actually not a bad. Now, I don't know if it fits this music, okay? Because if I think Spider My Room, I think where, where Renee's going is actually really interesting and clever, is you, you could say, and this would be, this is very, very elemental, elemental at this moment, but you could say that, oh, you know, you just like, I'm, I glance up, I see a spider in the corner, weaving its web. And then that made me think of you and how you weaved your web of deceit for me or whatever. Okay, Holly, I'm talking to you, Holly. <laughs> How, how do I have so much fun by myself? <laughs> no comment. Don't answer that question. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Jeff. It's it's definitely why I I because you really do want to get to that that heart uh, right brain art moment or whatever. You want to get to that moment and you want to maybe let that moment take over, which is kind of what just happened there, right? I just kind of would let let the spirit sing through me, the spirit of music or God, the Holy Spirit or whatever kind of sing through me. Now, I've never, ever said that God gave me a song. I told you this last week. I'm like, I've written a lot of worship songs and I never went, God gave me this song because, because, you know, I've had, I've heard people sit down at a piano at church service and say, God gave me the song. And then they proceed to play literally the worst song I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, going, ah, I don't think it was God that gave me that song. <laughs> So, you know, in, 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 like I said, unless God was like writing something, because no, that's not it. He throws and misses the trash can, falls through the cloud, hits that person in the lap, and they go, what's this? Thank you, me, me Dios. Thank you. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how God gave you that song. He didn't want it. That's usually what I say in my head. It's like, yeah, God gave you that song because he didn't want it. <laughs> he knew it wasn't any good. Wasn't going to make his record. So, uh, but you do kind of let the spirit of music kind of start flowing through you, especially the longer you've been doing this. Uh, you know, if you're a very beginner, hey, look, we got a new subscriber. Um, if you're a beginner, <laughs> yeah, you, Holly, I'm talking to you. Uh, and, uh, uh, oh, uh, who's got a broken leg? <laughs> Could it be Oompa? <laughs> I'm going to drink all my coffee too soon. I got to, I got to back off the coffee. I think it's because I'm singing. I, I'm lubricating. Um, but what I did was kind of a pop context uh, there. And so what I might do, um, I don't know if I go to the G chord for the bridge. You know, I might eventually, but I might go. So I, I've forgotten the melodies, but, um, but basically I just kept going up and up and up. Okay. So I used pitch. I increased the pitch from the A section to the B section to the C section of the verse to the pre chorus to the chorus. I also increased um, frequency of notes. So kind of a longer, more drawn out melody in the verse, a <clears throat> little bit more density, <coughs> excuse me, in the in the pre-chorus and, and a lot more density. You know, like Ed Sheeran might do, although he's done this in verse two, but he might do really fast things. You know, and I kind of got there, didn't I? I kind of went. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Like I said, that could be a good bridge or a post course. So, so now I've got 
all those using the same chords. I've got a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus, and then I have a post-chorus using no new chords. Um, let me play it all so you can get context. This, this is how you write. Everything's on the table. See, I even told you, you know, even last week I was like, I don't know about this B section. Now I'm kind of like going, you know what? I, I know about the B section now. I don't like that B section. And the C section's right out. <laughs> a little little uh, little uh, Monty Python reference there. Right out. <laughs> okay, so... You will not have been mortally wounded in vain. I'm getting better. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, great. Yeah, so you start with lyrics. A lot of people start with lyrics. I, I, I kind of couldn't tell. Well, now I write completely different. Okay, so here's here's what we have. I got the C. Here's the chord bridge. And then A minor to F, C. That's pretty much the song. Isn't that cool? So one of the advantages of that is that anyone can sit down at the piano and learn it. They don't have to learn a lot of songs. And then you've got people going, oh, what song's that? Oh, it's a song I heard on the radio. I really like it. It's super simple. It's only these chords. Um, and they go, oh, show it to me. And then they and go, oh, and I'll put it in my playlist. Oh, you know, that, it's that kind of thing. It, you know, really, you don't have, the, the top 40 music is not populated with complex songs. Uh, and I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just tell, saying that's kind of how it works. Um, so... dynamics as a tool um, to not only to notate the different sections uh, oh well Pedro I've got a real good answer for you <laughs> collaborate uh, I know sometimes you want to be a solo songwriter and that may you may you may have that gift um, but I'll tell you, you find the right person to collaborate with. I mean, when Kelly Jekyll, Kelly Jekyll and I sat down for the first time, we wrote five songs complete in six hours. Um, not tracked, but I just started playing a groove. I don't even know if any of them were grooves I already had. I think I just started doing something. And immediately she, she starts flipping through her lyric book, see, because... There's people like you and me, Pedro, that have all sorts of good chord ideas, or song structure ideas, and things like that. But we don't have lyric books, and there are other people. Have, and I do actually have lyric books, uh, and I have stacks of them. But they they usually have melodies associated with them, and it's a long time ago, and I don't really write top line anymore. So one of the best things you can do is collaborate because you're multiplying your opportunities. Like if you know one person in the music industry and they know one person in the music industry and you collaborate, now you know two people in the music industry. If you know one and they know five, now you've got six. If you know six and they know one, now they've got seven, you know, or whatever. So it's it's definitely, that's the first place, you know, you might try to find someone you can um, collaborate with. Find someone that you, um, uh, that writes lyrics doesn't necessarily have to be anyone you know. You can you can find them other ways on on forums and things like that. Um, a lot of times, people send their music to other people, and then they write lyrics. You know, you got to be careful about that. I'm not recommending that necessarily. Um, hey, uh, Arnold Parnold. <laughs> Arnold Parnold. <laughs> Another good handle. We got some good handles today, people. Gary Books in the house. Yes, 
I guarantee you, John and Paul, every time they got together, and they were competitive, too, and they would bring songs to each other and help them finish, especially early on. Uh, Paul bought, I, um, I, you know, when we were in London, uh, we walked by Paul's house. He was actually in Japan at the time. In fact, he got sick and had to cancel tours, and we were worried that we were when we were in London in 2014 that he was going to die. It was like, you know, it's kind of one of those things you're just kind of waiting for that to happen, sadly. Um, it's funny, Walter was telling me his first gig he ever did in L.A., you know, Walter, the drummer from my church who sometimes shows up on a, our live stream here, um, Walter was telling me, like, the first gig he did in L.A. was for Ringo Starr's wife's birthday. So he he doesn't know anybody. Walter's from Puerto Rico. He did you know, he knew Latin music, but he didn't really know. And he didn't know what Ringo Starr looked like today. And Ringo, so this guy comes over and starts playing his hi-hat. And he's trying to play drums. And it was Ringo <laughs> playing his hi-hat. He was like... What you, dude, like, dude, what are you doing? You know, and then and then another guy comes over and starts playing his Tom, and that was Jim Keltner. And if you don't know who Jim Keltner is, he's the only drummer that's actually played and recorded with all four Beatles. He played, uh, you know, on all, you know, Jim, uh, on Paul's records and John's records and George's records and stuff. So, uh, and uh, he's, a, he's a Christian. It's funny because he told me the story about how um, uh, George Harrison... Was it George Harrison? Used to, yeah, I think George Harrison used to like to get him because he was a drummer, I think, for the Traveling Wilburys. So he said they would go on tour, and George Harrison used to love to get him drunk because he would talk about Jesus. He said he became a he became a tent preacher when he was drunk. <laughs> Jim Kellner, he's dead. Jim Jim grew up in Pasadena. Um, super 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 nice guy. So. Um, but yeah, as far as collaborating, I mean, I think that's a great way to go. But as far as lyrics, you know, here's the thing. Lyrics can come from a lot of places. And if you don't, if you've never written lyrics before, it can be kind of intimidating. Just start. Just start. It doesn't matter. Write. Um, I don't want to tell you to get some life experiences because that means you may go, okay, so I'll go out and get really drunk. You know, I'll get in a relationship, break it off. No, no. Don't do anything intentionally to, you know, to give yourself fodder for lyrics, but, um, but life itself, or just, you know, reading a book, going to, seeing a movie, um, you know, I don't know, you can, you can write a song, you can write a story song, <clears throat> you can maybe take your favorite Netflix show and go, okay, I'm going to write a story about this character, you know, and a song about this character, oh, I got another subscriber, um, but, uh, you know, don't be too obvious, don't use the person's name, just, you know, it, lyrics should be kind of uh, ambiguous in some ways. Um, they should, you know, they should be, if you're writing a love song about a specific person, you probably, I mean, it's been done, but you shouldn't necessarily say, I love you, Holly. Nobody should ever say, I love you, Holly. That would just be a silly thing to say. Why am I picking on Holly today? Hey, Genesis. Yes. Well, I also, <clears throat> Genesis, I also came up with this, um, I, I, one of my favorite songs that I wrote, um, <clears throat> that I never recorded it, but I call it Yellow Lights, and it, it's, uh, I don't know where it is. I, I, don't, I have a recording of it somewhere, but, um, but it was say, that exact thing. I just looked, I said, okay, I, I kind of closed my eyes. I said, I'm going to open my eyes. Whatever I see, I'm going to make that the title of my song. So um, I forget your name. <clears throat> what was the guy's name that was asking about lyrics? And it's fine. I, I'm totally... Oh, okay. Yep. I see them. I've got a session. Um, let's see. Oh, pa Pedro. Okay, Pedro. Yeah. So Pedro was asking about, you know, how do you write lyrics if you got music? Oh, we got a lot of people showing up now. Um, <clears throat> and so, like I said, one thing is just collaborate with someone who likes to write lyrics. You know, you may that you may find that you've got a skill set over here and not the, over here, but you can partner with someone, and then you. Then you're then you're doubling your opportunities uh, to get placements, to get songs on records, or to get whatever. Uh, that that lyric writer may be a very good singer. Maybe now you've just created a, a songwriting duo or something like that. Um, and if it works, if it's a good partnership, you can you can do a lot. Kelly and I have written many songs together. Okay, so um, but that song "Yellow Light," what, what it was was uh, <clears throat> a flam on me. Um, oops. 
Sorry. So, um, <clears throat> so I made this, so I saw the, you know, I saw, I opened my eyes. It was a yellow light. The light had just changed yellow, right? Yellow is when it, in America, I don't pretty much say, well, God bless you, Lena. When it goes from green to red, it hits yellow, right? And it's only in yellow for a little bit. And a lot of people, um, <clears throat> a lot of people will, um, take that yellow light in two different extremes, right? And that was that, you know, and immediately I'm starting to work. Okay, now, how, and he, the goal was this, uh, Pedro, my goal, my self-imposed goal, and same to you guys, <clears throat> is to take that one word, or in this case, it was two words. <clears throat> I wanted to do one word, but when I saw the light, I said yellow light. I could have said light, but light was too fake. So I said yellow light. They gave me a little more specific. So two word, it doesn't really matter. That's just me being kind of... Uh, uh, Right? It is practice. It's a muscle, Pedro. They definitely just did it a lot. I bet you they have pages and pages and pages of stuff that is crap that they never released. I, I, both of them. I mean, that's just, you watch that Beatle documentary and you see how hard they worked. I guarantee you, Tom Waits works really hard and so did Dylan. So uh, hopefully not so much now. Come on, dude, enjoy your life. Oh, Dylan just sold his catalog for $400 million, So <laughs> I think he's probably enjoying his life. But, um, but the thing is to try to make that about love, okay? I always tell young songwriters, if you can write, you can find a new way to say I love you, it's worth a million dollars, all right? So um, the yellow light song was like, so what I did was I saw it as that yellow light is that moment in a relationship <clears throat> where, one, you know, we've all been there where one of you accelerates and one of you slams on the brake. And it may not be a specific moment, but it could be like this, like, I'm ready to go to the next step, and and she's not, right? Or she's ready to go to the next step, and I'm not. And that's the yellow light. And so um, <clears throat> so, the, so the, the lyric was about that. And I, I thought it was actually a really clever lyric. Um, I actually was going to have Kelly record it at some point. We just got sidetracked with other, other things. But um, it was like, oh, yeah, it was... See if I have it. <coughs> Sorry, it's got phlegm on my tubes. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Let me go here and see if I have it. Oops. I have to, I have to know how to spell yellow first. Yeah. Okay. I see a PDF. Two thousand. This is pretty old. So two thousand thirteen. Like I said, I don't really write lyrics anymore. It's not one of the things I I tend to work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So the, the lyrics are always for me a work in progress. Um, and you can see, like, uh, if you saw this sheet, you'd see some erased words and things like that but we're miles out of town driving side by side so that i'm trying to paint a picture of two people driving down the road like side by side like maybe even racing a little bit uh like two bats out of hell down state road 95 it definitely has a country song vibe uh through the hazy dust and soybean fields coming to a point where we go or yield and then it goes, I'm running yellow lights, throwing caution to the wind. I'm running yellow lights, leaving you behind again. And I really like this, the, my melody. I think I'm... Oh, no, it's a weird. Shoot, what was it? Oh, 
I think. So I, the song's in three. Uh, so right away, it's interesting. I felt like it was. I'm running out of lights. So I'm pushing the I'm running out of lights. Did you put her on again? I'm running out of lights. So I'm pushing to the wind. I'm running out of lights. Did you put her on again? Did you or leaving her behind again, or leaving him behind again. You could insert anything. But that was the, uh, uh, again, that that lyric 100% came from, 100% um, came from close my eyes, open up, first thing I saw, and then try to make, try to write a song. It was really just an exercise. It wasn't intended to be something I, I didn't know if I was gonna like it. But I did, I, you know. Laid out really nice. I mean, I really like that. I don't know if you guys like that. You have a dentist appointment on Wednesday. What? Oh, no. I don't eat hard candy. Oh, you're getting a crown for Christmas? Dang it. My dentist wants to put crowns on my one side. Um, and then I went to my old dentist and he said, you don't need it. So, my knees hurt. I want nothing more than to ride a bike again. Uh oh, I have five I need to sell. You, you can still, oh, so, oh, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan did, Dylan did write alone, I think. He very rarely wrote with other people that I know of. I don't think of, um, even Paul Simon, even though I think Paul Simon mostly wrote those songs, even though I, if, if to my opinion, uh, <clears throat> The harmonies are so powerful and important to those uh, early Simon and Garfunkel songs that if he didn't give Simon percentages for coming up with the harmonies, if Paul wrote the harmonies, that's a different thing. Uh, but those harmonies are so intrinsic to the song. It's like if you were to take away Garfunkel's harmonies on those Paul Simon songs, I wonder if they would be as powerful and if they would have been hits. So... Um, oh, look, we're at 97. Holy cow. So we're almost 100 away. You notice I say we, because I, I, I consider you guys are all part of this. Um, and uh, so 100,000, I'm hoping I get one of those checks next to my name. And I, I'll tell you why, not because it's ego thing. Okay, uh, is, I don't really care about that. In fact, almost in some ways, it, I almost don't want it. But um, but the thing about the check is that if I go to a Rick Beato video and comment and I have a check next to my name, a lot of people are going to wait, wait, who's he? And they're going to click on it and they're going to check me out and they may or may or not, may or may not like me, but I can become, I comment on a lot of videos. And, um, so yeah, I don't know why Sam they made me approve that, but okay. Oh, another thing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Right, right. Well, and when Dylan, when they he was in uh, Wilburys, I'm sure he wrote stuff with George Harrison too. Yeah, yeah. So he definitely collaborated, but he didn't need to. You know, he was a singer songwriter. He was kind of self contained. Probably, um, Dylan was probably self contained maybe because he couldn't find bandmates or something. I forget. He kind of grew up in was it Vermont or something like that. Kind of rural. Um, or maybe he's a New York City guy. I don't know. But um, and. But when I was a kid, I couldn't get into a band, and I thought, well, fine, forget it. I'll just be a, I'll just be a self-contained jazz musician. I just kind of learned a bunch of those kind of things and thought, well, I'll just, I'll just sit in a bar and play by myself. I don't need a band. <laughs> and then I got in a band and then I went, okay, forget that stuff. <laughs> Being in a band's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. So he grew up in a rural area and, and thank you, Gary. Um, uh, I'm not much of a Dylan file, so I apologize. Um, but 
So we've been talking about writing. Now, um, the song we wrote last week, and i got to get everybody's uh, publishing information so I can put you all on the, on the song. Um, but the song we were working on last week, um, I, I, I liked the A section and then didn't, I didn't dig the B section. So now I've kind of re, re, kind of jigged the song to retooled the song to be more of a, it, in a kind of more of a pop progression in that it just keeps repeating and repeating the same chord progression over again. Um, and what that does, it doesn't mean it's a boring song. What that does is it puts all the pressure on the top line. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. These pop writers are so freaking good at writing melodies because that's what they do. They'll write the same. I mean, the song Home to Mama. I don't know if I can sing it because it's too high. Home to Mama. I, it's actually the first song that Sam Hook and I ever wrote, and it got recorded by Justin Bieber and Cody Simpson. Um, so you can find it. Let's see if I find it on YouTube. Um, and it, Sam did a great job. I, mean, I just did the guitar part, you know, and it's the same four chords over and over and over again. Um, and, uh, whoops, there you go. Uh, and, but Sam never wrote a second verse to it. So they just kind of, um, uh, they just kind of, I got I had to mute here. Hold on. They just each sang the verse once and then they each, so I wish they wish Sam would finish, you know, written a second verse or something like that. Um, that would have been cool. Um, but Sam did a great job on come up with, you know, taking the melody and keep going and keep going and developing. And, you know, again, it kind of pitches up, you know, the melody goes up, uh, pitch wise um, and you know the, the kind of trick on that is if you notice like right I'm in this range of the C chord and then I kind of go into this range of the C chord and then I go to this range of the C chord so with each subsequent section I might move up the triad um, I could even technically do the same melody but just harmonize and create a harmony from the previous melody. so I gotta go Uh, yeah. Hold on, Jeff. Now, if I were to harmonize, go up a, a third on that one or up a, a, a chord tone, then the next time around it could be. I could totally do that, um, although it would be pretty obvious what I'm doing. But at least that could be a starting point. But that's kind of what a lot of pop artists do. Okay, now, so Jeff asked, said, uh, should some kind of instrument keep playing the notes E and F through each chord? Totally could do that. Because um, uh, when I'm playing this progression... You could have something doing that. Like some glassy, high, reverby guitar, 
Um, you could have strings, you know, like that play up there. I don't know if I have strings. I don't think I have strings up there. Um, I don't even know if I have a piano up there. <clears throat> I got to be careful because I was writing, I think, acoustic stuff. No, that was electric. Okay, I just got muted. Um, let, let me let me pull up a piano. I always like to have a piano. Ah, but I'm bummed. Where was I speaking of? Where am I? Ah. While that's loading, I'm going to download. I've got sent the files for the session I have to do is for a TV show. It's for, uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, cool. Oh, did she give me a, this is an homage to Bell, Kill Bill, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's see. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we can't do that. I lost my, uh, yeah, I got to do a new window here. Hold on. No, we did it again. Yeah, if you're seeing that. See, I don't, well, I can do it this way. I'll go away from that for now. Okay, so we'll go there. Now I can open. So, um, yeah, so I could do, um, just need to download all these. Why is this so complex? Weird. All right. This is everything, right? I don't want to upload, I want to download. You're going to make me download these individually, really? That kind of stinks. I'll do it. Um, I got a chart. I want to check out the chart real quick. Um, all right. Now I can close that. Still standing at 897 as far as subscribers go. Go back to this window. There we go. Um, All right, so um, let's see, what was the, all right. Oh, well that lo loaded pretty quick, so that tells me it's not a really long queue. All right, this looks like fun. It's pretty redundant, let's see. Hopefully it's not too hard. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so uh, I have a piano now. Wait, oh, that's weird. Yeah, right. well, let me just do this, make sure I don't accidentally. a piano song you can hear that you know a good song if you write a you know any, any good song can be heard a lot done a lot of different ways uh i mean how many times have you heard you know i i remember i didn't realize that kurt Cobain was a good songwriter until i heard a music version of smells like teen spirit and i realized dude that's a great melody i mean i love the record i had the record i bought the album when it first came out 
And um, uh, I, I always liked uh, always liked Cobain and, and Nirvana, but um, the melody, like his b ability to write melodies. So <clears throat> you could do a samba arrangement of it. You could do a jazz arrangement, a blues arrangement. You could do you know, heavy metal, rock, pop rock, you could do a pop arrangement, you could do, uh, if it's a good song, it can be done in a lot of different styles, and that's, and that's what happens, um, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> hold on, I gotta send a link, somebody wants to jump in here, uh, yes, um, hold on, let's do it. So um, now I'm now I'm now I'm uh, <laughs> gonna be paranoid because Iku's gonna join the composer I'm working for today. So when um, so again, let's talk about yeah. I think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna happen. The, the hundred thousand is gonna happen, but it may happen before Christmas, Lena. I, I'm with you. So, so the, the, the chord progression that I had, you know, this one here, like I said, I like, I like the A section, but I never liked the B section. So it's fine. Like I said, do the pop thing and write, uh, just come up with another melody over the same section the same harmony. Um, and then on the next, um, on the next section, you know, maybe, like I said, it, it's, Pop is so often just the same four chords um, and all of the pressures on the top line, all of the pressures on the whoever's writing the melody. And um, lyrics too, but lyrics are kind of, to be honest, in pop music, pretty throwaway. I mean, they're all songs are always about love or sex or drugs or something. Well, I don't know about drugs. That's not very common pop, man, you know. Um, but... Elongated melody, and then busier on the vert on the on this pre-chorus. Um, coffee, coffee grounds. I'm getting to the end of my coffee. <laughs> I hate that. Don't you hate that when you get coffee grounds on your tongue? So, um, you know, it, you, you, you want to make the chorus bigger and you want, you want the chorus a lot of times to be, and not every chorus doesn't have to be a shout chorus or something that everybody's going to sing along with. Um, if, if it doesn't fit the lyric, you know, <laughs> you want to be like, you know, singing about your dead grandma or something like that. <laughs> and you're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> You know, rocking out on that, that doesn't make any sense. So again, the lyrics are going to have to match the melody. Um, and then, you know, th that may be something you won't notice. You may do a song where it's like, why is the melody so happy and you're singing about your grandma dying? You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like, that should be over a... That should be a minor song. You know, my grandmother died today. I don't know what to say. I miss her already. You know, it's like, that's that song. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be like, my grandma died today. Yeah. You know, yeah, baby. You know, you <laughs> so, so lyrics definitely come into play. I'm just trying to entertain you all. Um, lyrics uh, are definitely important, um, and much more so in the folk song singer songwriter genre. Much more so, pop. It's I don't want to say lyrics are throwaway. Um, lyrics can often be the hook, uh, but 
Um, I, it's funny because I think about the 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 Bieber Kid Leroy song that uh, Charlie Puth wrote. That you know, that was you know in the that was so overused in the eighties. And, you're, and like in the 90s, we used to do that just to make fun of the 80s, right? <laughs> you, want, you want to know what the 80s sound like. Here's... And then all of a sudden, now uh, Charlie Puth writes this, you know. It's a great hook. It's just like he, Charlie managed to take that. 80s cliche and turn and Charlie's a phenomenal songwriter, great musician, um, and but he managed to turn that um, that 80 that 80s little hooky thing into a really really cool 2021 pop song. Um, I mean, let's just. And the track is great. It's really up tempo, which is kind of rare to have that kind of beat. Normally, you know, a lot of pop songs are kind of more in the hip hop realm. That song is kind of more in the in the power pop realm. Hey, Cordelet, Ambrose. Oh. Okay, we can block those. Sorry, <laughs> Dennis. You know what to do, Dennis. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of I I, I kind of I'm thinking. No, I was up uh, the B section. I, I was having a hard time writing a melody over, which is ironic because it's a new chord progression. I should be able to come up with a, a chord melody. It was easier to write a second a chord, um, second melody idea over the same chord progression. And again, I like I like the I like the fact that we never go to the five chord, and the chords are unevenly distributed. That's also really nice. Meaning that I'm not doing four beats of each chord, right? I'm going four beats here and then two beats or push and then four beats here and then two beats of F, basically. Two beats, kind of a push, but I, I'm breaking it up so it's not just a pure like. wrong with that but it, those chords are evenly distributed see if I want it so I could do that let me let me do give the example of that okay so what I was playing let me do G okay I don't know why I'm in C but uh, we did C but let me do G just for any beginners that don't want to have to play an F chord so the the chords we have in G are G let's say E minor this is the sixth chord four and five uh, C and D and that would be a very typical um, what was I just doing that one okay so uh, but the typical 50s pop chord progression would be. Right? 1645. Uh, but we're going to go. To C, G. And you can write a whole song over that. You don't need anything else. Pop does it all the time. If I were to unevenly distribute these chords, how would that look like? So I could sit on the E minor for six beats. See that? I'm doing six beats of E minor and two beats of C instead of four of each. Six and two. Six plus two is four, eight and four plus four is eight. So it's the same number of beats, but I'm just delaying Oh, second chord. Thank you, Joseph. Thanks. Joseph just bought my coffee. Right? And so that, and that, again, I haven't even written a melody or a lyric out over that, and that might inspire something completely different then. Um, and again, it's it's that trying changing something. I, I I'm I know mentally or uh, theo theoretically, 
and mathematically that I can go, instead of doing four beats and four beats, I can go six and two. Um, and the question is, when I do it, did it work? Did it inspire? Did it, did it, did you feel it here or was it only up here? Was it in the right brain or only in the left brain? Or what am I pointing to? I don't know. Was it, you're, you're using your craft, your knowledge, um, and, and you're, you're going to test it against your heart to see if it inspires anything. It's that second that that happens that you determine whether or not you're going to continue with that. Okay? So here's what I'm talking about. Right there, it wants to go to C, right? But, but that sounds like 400 million other things. So let me, if I mess it up a little bit, I could push, I could push something. gives it a different feel right kind of makes it that makes it light kind of lighter a lot of times I hear R&B when I hear a push like that mm -hmm. bah, I hear a horn section you know whatever um, but it also kind of has a little more lighty you know flighty mm -hmm. right you know okay but I'm gonna go six and two and, and then I'm gonna listen I'm just gonna let my heart be the judge and go, yeah, I like that. I could write over that. I could take that to the next thing. So here's what that sounds like. And again, this applies to guitar, piano, or metal. Now, if I play piano, technically, that that constitutes a change of instruments, all right? So you can everybody can take a sip. That's one of our drinking game rules. If I change instruments, everybody takes a sip. So you know, they go, I don't like that voice. No, wait, was it? Oh, he might. So it, I could hear that as a piano song. I could hear you, can, and if you're doing a piano, you can get you know you can start getting into the you can start getting into the melodies. You can start playing around with. You can start getting all, uh, and I can't do it, but you can get all Elton Johnny on that and make it into a kind of a piano counter melody to a melody. But what does that inspire? might be the spider on the wall song. <laughs> and I'm just making sure there are no spiders on my walls. I see no spiders on the walls. All right, let me move this down. Just a scotch. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you get some good time. It's always really, really busy for me because we have a million services. Josh, how many services are you doing this, uh, this week? We actually have a, a Christmas service the day after Christmas. So at least the music we're doing, Christmas Eve services, we're doing on Christmas. So we have Christmas Eve, Eve, we have one service. Christmas Eve, we have three. And then the day after Christmas, we have one. So we have five services, which is two more than normal. Uh, but they're all identical, which is great. So it's one set of music. And once you have it down, you have it down. But I have a rehearsal on Tuesday. So we don't normally rehearse midweek, but for Christmas is a big event and they gotta they gotta stage everything and stuff, so Okay, so that It's still kinda of fun changing on the halfway through the bar. You know, I could write some about being lonely sitting here by myself talking to my live stream and I make the spider my friend. So the, any melody that works over the E minor is going to work over G, which is nice to know. Um, <clears throat> but when you go to the C chord, you might want to make some accommodation. So a Like C 
singing that C over the D chord. That seventh is a seventh. It makes it, it skews it a little on the folky country range. If you sing that six, or I mean, I'm sorry, the seventh. Uh, but da, 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 da. And I could do, 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 do. if I just go past the C, if I just go down the scale, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, what, what, where did I do it? So, so it's just the pick up to the B3. There's the hook. That's the hook. I mean, already, I can, so far in this song, in this new song, this is a new one, because um, I changed the key of G just for the sake of any beginners out there who didn't want to try to play the F chord. Uh, so we got E minor, C, G, and D. Um, so I didn't go da 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 da. I didn't do the. I want to save that. I don't want to do it every time. Or then if you do it too much, it almost stops being a hook. I mean, obviously, if you do it every all the time, it's totally a hook. But it's like the hook becomes less effective if you do it too much. So, I love that. You got that. You can hear the beat, you know. Guitar wise, I'm I'm trying to counter the voice, right? It could even be a that could be a moment at the end of the song if you wanted to, you know, if you're repeating the chorus. Now, see, I think maybe that's a chorus. Oftentimes, I start writing and I start writing a chorus. I don't know. Uh, we're doing two Christmas Eve services and then rebroadcasting them. Okay. Oh, that's great. Well, that's actually not bad. Was it last year? Was it last year we did? Boy, the COVID thing's going on for so long. It seems like we filmed our Christmas service and just broadcast. We didn't actually have Christmas service. I think because California shut down like big time. We, we shut down last Christmas. Yeah. Friends and Snakes. That's true. <laughs> but Joseph makes a good point. If you avoid the F chord, you're going to stay a beginner. Yeah, eventually you're going to have to get that chord down. And the great thing is once you have it down, you have 12 chords down. Anytime you learn a bar chord, you're really learning 12 chords, not one. Okay, remember that. And that's why it's so important to know where the root is on the chord so you, and then learn your fretboard particularly on that string, so that you can at least learn it with the, if this is A minor, if this is a minor, F minor seven, this is A minor seven, this is B flat minor seven, this is C sharp minor seven. <laughs> New groove. Okay, no, we're not gonna do it. same melody but just change the rhythm of it and maybe you might ultimately like what I just did uh, you know my head is basically what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm I'm experimenting, and you, there are when you're in that space of experimenting and trying to find melodies and stuff. There are no wrong answers at this point. You can try anything and and see if you can get it to work. 
um, and you and chances are if you do something if you do something that you might uh, in in your craft in your head uh, in your left brain or right brain I forget which I always forget um, if you in in you know in your theoretical knowledge um, no is wrong and then but your heart goes but wait <laughs> that sounds really cool it's like in yesterday yes There's a lot of wrong chords in that progression. Which which remember there was something that when Paul when George Martin was doing the string arrangement the the quartet arrangement which the cool thing about that quartet it's hadn't really been done in pop music and um, I mean if you go back to calling you know Frank Sinatra pop music he had he sang with orchestras and technically he was a pop singer and was considered that from the 30s on so yeah technically that was pop music Oh, thanks, Peroni. <laughs> I feel like I've been all over the map. I'm about to. I'm about to end up, but finish up. But let's see how we're doing. Um, I think we're in the 30s. Oh no, it's definitely scaled back. So we peaked though. We got up to almost 40, 39. That's pretty good. Um, but uh, when they recorded those strings, it was a string quartet. I think it was uh, two violins, a viola, and a cello, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they close mic'd them, which was a very unique sound. Instead of putting one mic in the room, and they, they close mic the, the, the violinist and stuff uh, for that, and they got a very, very rosiny sound. Now it's more common, you know, people do that all the time now, but it was a very, you could hear the, the which, you know, me, when I'm recording acoustics, I really love to try to, best I can, capture the sound of the pick hitting the strings, because that's like, well, that's where, it, that's where it's human, you know, and, um, but there was a melody that Paul heard in his head, and George Martin said, no, that's theoretically, that won't work. It's wrong. And George Martin had to admit later, um, exactly, Holly, uh, George Martin had to admit later that um, he was wrong. Not later, like that, later that, that hour. <laughs> it wasn't like in a book six years, you know, 60 years later, he admitted that he was wrong. No, it was like. Oh yeah, no, Paul's right. Yeah, Paul heard. Mm, da, 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 da. It was. I think it was in the bridge. Why she had to go? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And then it went to the back to the, so it. That was what Paul heard in the strings, and it's like E flat, C, and B flat, and it's like, but it's going to E minor. This is making, but, but then when when they did it, and it's like, and the thing, one of the things that really blew me away about, I knew Paul was a good piano player because Martha, my dear, and Lady Madonna and stuff, but John was a pretty good piano player, and Ringo could play too, and even George would noodle at it. But he he, he says in, in Get Back, he says at one point, he goes, um. He goes, <laughs> it's it's so much harder, you know. Guitar is so much easier. I just he just gets guitar, and he goes, piano is so hard. It's it's true. Piano is kind of completely different me me uh, mechanics. So, oh, how do you add a tip? Well, Bob, <laughs> um, it should be at the bottom there. Uh, you have a smiley face. You have a dollar sign, and then there's a little analytic thing. I don't know if you have that. Create a poll. Oh, I can create a poll. Okay. Uh, but if you're on a browser, if you're on a browser watching you underneath there, you might be able to uh, do a tip. Um, I think that's and then you hit send. And as far as but you're probably going to have to have some kind of financial establishment linked to that uh, to to your Google account. Right. You have to have a Google account to to watch. You don't have to have a Google account to watch, but to 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 chat, you have to have a Google account. So. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining the uh, Tom Teases Holly uh, live stream. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, so I think that, yeah, it kind of looks like an S, but it's a dollar sign. Oh, we lost a subscriber. Dang it. <laughs> you see our count. Our running total is, is dropped. We're, I've got the running total up there, and I will log in. If I get to like 99,998, 99, 97, I'll go live. And I'll just start. We'll, we won't talk about song reality or something. It'll be like the great countdown. And I'll have to like, I don't know, maybe I could wear a red, white, and blue bikini or something and jump around. <laughs> I don't know. So confetti. I don't know. I don't really have a plan for that moment. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll celebrate. So, uh, celebrate. <laughs> and then I get demonetized because <laughs> I'm playing cover, you know, playing, uh, cover tunes. So, um, uh, yeah. And also you can, uh, anyway, well, we'll, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, so, gosh, you know, with a song or anything. Um, so I, like I said, I think on our song that we started last week, um, I think that I think we're going to get rid of the B section, the C section. Um, I think that the A section uh, is just going to repeat, and we're going to come up with new melodies over it. Um, and so, <clears throat> I, I said I was going to do maybe this this week, but maybe next week what I'll do is. Um, uh, we'll we'll start to track it, you know. Like I'll I'll create a um, a session. Uh, you know, first thing you gotta do is you gotta find tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve. Either fast or slow, depending on what, if you're counting eighth notes or quarter notes. Um, so. Boom, it's pretty slow tempo. I'm gonna say 84 maybe. Well, oh, I'm good. So that's pretty close, okay? Um, you can't really hear that, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add drums here. So check this out. I'm gonna add, and I'm just gonna do a. Uh, Kind of, I think, just a songwriter drummer. So it's going to be a pretty, um, pretty simple. Uh, simple sound, simple drum pattern. Um, oops, go no, go away. Here we go. All right. There's a, you know, now here's the thing. Okay, so there's, there's my first eight bars, right? This is our first eight. Um, and <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna quantize that. Like you know, get electric guitar, you can Whole nother series. 
Um, I could do a, a billion a billion videos on. Uh, oh, uh, not a little bit, not yet. My oh, uh, Gary asked, did my new Weizenborn inspire me? <clears throat> Some I, I I have to have leave it out and for it to inspire me. It's in the case in the closet right now. So, um, but I'm going to do a video on. I'm going to do a review of it, and I've decided I like the open C sharp tuning the best, which is open D but down a half step. <clears throat> so I'm going to. It's in that tuning. Now, if I have to gig with it, I'll probably put it up to D or something. But, um, but a whole other series of live stream lessons about creating a guitar part. You know, that's a whole other thing. But that's I feel like that's a more professional, a pro kind of thing. Synth. This could be a guitar, electric guitar, it could be acoustic, it could be mandolin, depending on the style of music. But now I've got a loop that I can, now I don't even have to just practice my melodies. for rock band, it's very good. And then, get it. This would be a good song for them. Now you got the chorus. Yeah, there's so many things you could do there. I'm keeping it pretty simple. Hopefully that's not too loud. Um, but that's just piano and drums, you know, and then I could add bass, I could add strings, I could add synths, I could add guitars, I could add percussion, I could change everything. Um, it doesn't have to be that groove. Um, so, you, can, you know, again, you, again I, there, there's a reason why I'm leaving all of these elements over here. I can never point in the right direction. All of those elements, and if I add, I've added to them, we added inspiration a couple weeks ago. But yeah, it's, it's like, these are all elements of the, in, in a song, um, and uh, you know, basically melody, lyric, and hook are the only ones that are copyrightable, um, in my opinion, but we're getting to the point now where production's become copyrightable, and that's a bad thing, um, because of the, now hopefully they'll, those cases will be overturned. But, um, oh, I, I'll have to check that out, I didn't, yeah. A friend of mine was touring with the Jackson 5 in Europe when 9-11 happened. He got stuck in Europe for like a week. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. I have seen the, de the Be Beato's de deconstruction of Rocketman. That's pretty much, uh, you know, uh, what makes this song great. You're talking about that, right? He does. He did, yeah, I saw that one. It's such a great track. Um, yeah, and, and you, you really do, when you listen to Beato's videos, um, what makes this song great videos, which I don't believe he can generally monetize those because he's use, he's playing him so much in the thing. Even though it's a classic example of fair use, he's broadcasting. So that's the difference. Fair use is intended for the college, the classroom. So if you're teaching high school music theory class or a college music, you know, production class, you can totally you don't have to pay them to do that. But if you're broadcasting, whole another thing. Or you just can't monetize it. Stream on fire. <laughs> So yeah, we're starting. We're getting down. That, we're getting out of that. I peaked. 
I peaked. I lost people. I'm not sure what I did. Um, but so, so, but yeah, so you can see with Beato's videos, you really get a, a concept of how production is part of the whole package. Um, you know, there's the song and then there's the record. Okay. And we've been, there's been a lot of talk about this. Beato has been talking a lot about this too. Those are two different things. Um, so for example, I'll give you an example from a, from a legal standpoint. You can put, you can do a cover of a Beatles song and put it on your record. Okay, you have to give them royalties on your sales. Usually, the way you do that is through Harry Fox Agency. Um, you go to Harry Fox and you say you want to put this, and then they say here's how much you have to pay. If you're going to do a thousand CDs, it's going to cost you eighty five dollars. If you're going to do ten thousand CDs, it's going to cost you eight hundred fifty dollars for the song or whatever. And then that money gets sent. I get checks every month from Harry Fox. Um, you know, not you know usually. Twelve dollars or something like that. I mean, I got a big one the other day. It was pretty cool. I was like, "Whoa, cool!" <laughs> but usually, it's like three to twenty dollars. Um, and what that means generally is that someone's covering your song, and they have to pay for that right to do it. Um, and so uh, the um, so you could do it, you, but you can't take a Beatles song and put it on your your album. OK, so you can take a Beatles song and re-record it, but you can't take the recording of a Beatles song and put it on your record. Uh, if you did a greatest hits of the 60s, if with their permission, maybe you could do that. But you'll notice on all those greatest hits of the 60s compilation, those giant the time life, they never have Beatles songs in there. <laughs> it's just the Beatles do not allow that. So um, so a Beatles song, you might not be able to do that, but, you know, maybe the association or someone like that. You want to put Wendy on a song, and but again, there would be no reason to put someone else's song on your record. Uh, but to re-record it, that's not a problem. You're you're just re-recording the song. You can even do a, a, an exact takedown to your best ability. It doesn't matter. It's just a, you're just you're you just need to license the the copyright. You do not li need to license what's called the master, which is the master recording which is the original recording that we've all heard. Now, the reason we're talking about this a lot, or at least Beato, Beato is, is because Taylor Swift is, re she, some, uh, just, uh, Justin Bieber's manager, um, Scooter Braun, bought her masters, and she doesn't like Scooter, so out of sp spite, she's re-recording -re all of her masters and telling all of her fans to listen to her versions of them and not not the old versions, which I think is is... Uh, it's pretty telling, More says more about her than anything. Um, and I think Taylor Swift's a very good songwriter, and she does they, she does great song you know, records and things like that. I mean, her first three or four hits were written by a lady named Rose or something in Texas. Like this mom, like 40-year-old mom, who <laughs> wrote a lot of her original hits. Um, but um, the, uh, it's... Uh, that's the so that's the difference between the song. So the the song is you know the har the harmony, the chords, the melody, the lyrics, um, the form. Those things are like that. Those are kind of embedded in the song. And if you were to do an, a, a, a version, your version of it, you can change the genre, you can change the groove, you can change the tent, the meter. Well, meter would be a tough one to change. But I've heard songs that were in three four done four four. You could totally do it. But you can change the tempo. You can change the rhythm. You can change the key, obviously, to fit your voice. The production could be totally different. The timbre is all going to be dynamics can be totally different. You can have it go all complete. So all those orchestration, all that stuff can change. Um, and you to make it your own, you know, to make it your own, so to speak. But the only things that stick with the song are the melody, lyrics, and, and the, the harmony, the chords. And the hook, if there's a hook. Like, you know, Day Tripper, don't, ba -da 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 -da. that's the hook, not the melody. Same thing with like beat it. I always use beat it as an example. The the hook is the guitar. It's not the chorus. It's beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. I mean that's hooky, and I I could say you could divide the hook doesn't have to be one hundred percent that. It could be seventy percent that intro guitar intro and thirty percent the chorus shout chorus. But it's kind of a boring melody and a boring lyric. Um, it really, that's what gets people moving. So that's kind of my thought. Okay, uh, I'm not concerned with monetizing those. So yeah, I agree with that.
<laughs> nice. Yeah, I like I like mailbox money. We call it mailbox money. Yeah, right. Yeah, totally. Uh, 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 Oasis. Yeah, uh, yeah, Oasis. Uh, yeah, and they. Were, I remember when they first came out, they were heralded as the next Beatles. Yeah, that we we stopped hearing that. You don't hear that anymore. But for a while there, they were there were. Every now and then, you know, like a band would come out or artists would come out. It's like the next Beatles, and it did. It, it wouldn't live up to it. In fact, it was almost a curse. It kind of was for Oasis. Like, you know, I tears for, uh-oh, my streaming is slacking. Um, <laughs> yeah, my knees hurt says that uh, my plane is so poor that I could cover anyone's songs and not get in any trouble. You wouldn't be able to tell it was a cover. Well, the, the music industry is there, but there's, you know, the thing is a lot of times it's, it's the people on the outside, you know, I don't know that Dylan is complaining about the music industry when he just got $400 million. Uh, Springsteen got $500 million. Um, it's kind of, a, it, it, it's not as necessary as it was, but it's getting to be necessary again. You know, if you really want great placements in streams <coughs> on, on the streamers, um, in playlists on all the great playlists, um, a label will help you get there. And if the label can make you money, you know, here's the thing. I've always said this because I'm in a situation writing music where I'm right. I'm doing all the work and I'm getting 25% of the money. Well, not all the work, but me and my writing partner are doing all the work and we're getting 50% of the money and the production company that's just getting the songs, but using them play. Oh, buffering. We're buffering, aren't we? Sorry about that. Um, I think we're getting back there. Hold on. Regardless, I'm going, I, I know it's buffering. It's coming back now, I think. Uh, it's still kind of down there. Uh, but I am going to, uh, I am going to take off and I will, see, I will see you hopefully on Wednesday when I do the thing. Um, what's our, did we go up or down here? We're still at 96. So I will keep tabs on the uh, subscriber count. And if I get to like 998, 997, you know, I may jump on and we may watch it go up to 100,000 together. That would be fun. I would love that if it happens during the day. So it may happen overnight. I don't have any control over it, obviously. So and if it gets 99, I'll text my friend um, and, and have him boost it over 100. But uh Anyway, so so I'll see you all um, potentially on Wednesday at least in the premiere. I'll be in the chat, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if if we get close here, I'll I'll jump on, and then I'll see you. I don't maybe Christmas Day I'll jump on uh, with Alex or something. No, we have a lot of people coming over, so I probably won't do that. Um, time on Wednesday is ten o'clock. So the the the. It's if you go to my channel, you should see that there's a new video scheduled. It's a 10 minute video, so it's not super long, and it's um, about a tuning that I think you'll you'll dig, and so uh, we can watch that. Hey, Renee, good to see you, uh, Josh. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, um, and have a great Christmas time. I hope you have. You know, I know it's going to be tough this year with your dad just gone, so I I'd be praying for you. Uh, I think about you a lot, actually, um, and so. Um, just know that I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything. A lot of people are thinking about you, so um, but uh, it's all good. So everybody, take care. God bless you. Thank you, Holly, for being Bruce, Holly, and and um, uh, Dennis. <laughs> What's your name? Where is Dennis? I was like, where is my Dennis? Is up there? He was helping me. He was moderating comments. But thank you so much for doing all that moderation. Um, and then uh, now you don't have to be so moderated. You can go drink as much as you want. <laughs> So I'll see you guys later. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, I will see you. Hope, I'll see you kind of Wednesday and then probably before Christmas if this gets to that point. We're getting there. So I will talk to you soon. Okay. Goodbye, everyone.